SME, the Society for Mining, Metallurgy, and Exploration. Here, lives and livelihoods are tied closely to minerals and metals and the Earth's internal riches. And while we cherish them all, it's gold we're celebrating in 2007. Officially, it's our 50th anniversary, but the bedrock of SME goes back a long, long way. 136 years precisely. To Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, where 22 coal mining engineers founded our parent organization, AIME, the American Institute for Mining Engineers, later to become the American Institute for Mining, Metallurgical, and Petroleum Engineers. For half a century, SME has been here to support the professional development of our membership in every aspect of the minerals industry and facilitate information exchange between members around the globe. As we celebrate this landmark year, we invite you to enjoy a glimpse of the highlights and challenges of the past five decades and hear from creative, committed professionals who served a year at the helm of SME. SME has been wonderful at uh, its main mission, which is to the technology transfer and the professional development of its members, and I, I can see that continuing for many years. The 50s. SME was one of three AIME branches to become master of its own destiny in 1957, when it became a separate member society, then called the Society of Mining Engineers. The first board of directors met at New York City's Roosevelt Hotel. Later that year, John Cameron Fox became SME's first executive director. It was not a great year for the industry. Commodities were in a down cycle and many mines were forced to close or dramatically curtail production. Aggravating the situation were the increasing costs of labor, supplies, equipment, and taxes. But by the end of the decade, the industry turnaround was underway. And who was it that said, the more things change, the more they stay the same? SME's final president of the decade was J.W. Woomer, who'd worked at all levels of mining and believed all young engineers should do the same. Woomer was also against the idea of a union for engineers. A young man must decide whether he is going to be an educated individualist or an employee who needs the protection of a mother organization. When I joined, it was before SME. And uh, they didn't ask me a whole lot of questions. I was working. One of the criteria, you had to have so many years of responsible work in the industry. And that's what I had. I didn't have a degree, I had, but I had a responsible job, and I had worked uh, uh, seven, eight years in the industry. So I joined, and I. The value is it's inestimable. The value of my membership in uh, SME AIME, very valuable. And my boss realized that value. And I had doors open that I never, I may have not ever had them. The 60s. In 1960, the U.S. Department of the Interior warned that defense requirements for minerals and metals might climb above the current consumption levels, a harbinger, perhaps, of military escalation in Vietnam. The industry also was forewarned about metals needed for both missiles and for space exploration. This unprecedented demand stimulated the development of new mines and expansion of the nation's existing processing capacity. 190 mining engineering degrees were conferred in 1960, but there weren't enough jobs available. Even so, 1960 SME President A.B. Cummins remarked on an issue that would echo even to today. There is a need to emphasize and bring to the attention of better qualified young men the opportunities and satisfactions of a career in minerals engineering. SME's very first fall meeting was held in 1962 and over 600 members traveled to the heart of the Great Smoky Mountains, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, to attend. By the end of the decade, over 14,000 people held SME memberships. Moving on a little bit, uh, as a staff member of SME, one of my more interesting assignments was becoming a member of the Working Party 22 National Professional Engineering Examinations. 
basically our charge was to get mining engineering on the national examination level. Therefore, the individual states wouldn't have to prepare individuals, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the committee was led by Pete Fowler. We had representation from Colorado School of Mines, Missouri, University of Idaho, Kentucky, and West Virginia. The first mining minerals questions appeared in April 1980, and some 600 questions were answered by the people taking the exam, and thus we were on the map. For SME members, basically uh, the professional engineer members were now able to have reciprocity among the 25 states that actually uh, gave questions in mining engineering. It was one of the first major benefits to SME membership in the early 1980s and continues on to this day. The 70s. The war in Vietnam continued on into the new decade. The twin towers of the World Trade Center opened in 1973, and a break-in at the Watergate Hotel led to presidential demise. Earth Day and the EPA both emerged in 1970. Computers became an integral part of the industry, and the industry celebrated cessation of the gold standard. Inflation and recession, oil shortages, low commodity prices, and ever-increasing legislation were just part of the demands and challenges of the long decade of the 70s. SME spent most of the decade headquartered in Utah. Operations moved to Salt Lake from New York in 1972 and were there until relocating to Colorado in 1979. Like many SME presidents before and after him, Robert Merrill looked with optimism to the younger generation of miners. Our future lies in our young engineers. These young lions question everything we over-the-hill guys tell them. It is they who are going to maintain the strength of our nation and our standard of living. It's phenomenal the technology changes that I've seen over my career. SME is an organization that promotes the transfer of professional technologies and development and, and, uh, and, and knowledge. And it's a very important part of what we do in the organization to share that knowledge and technology improvement. And so it's a very important part of what we do. The 80s. An explosive Mount St. Helens marked the opening of the decade with the most destructive volcanic eruption in U.S. history. The first part of the decade was volatile for our industry as well. Mining Engineer magazine reported that 1982 was the worst of times for the mining industry since the Great Depression. Companies struggled to stay in the black, using closures and layoffs to balance the books. Bright spots were coal and gold mining operations, both on the upswing. Hello, I'm Bob Murray. I was president of SME in 1989. I was president of AIME in 2000. I've seen the cycles of the mining industry over the last 50 years, and I've seen the cycles of the fortunes of SME and AIME over that same time frame. At about mid-decade, the industry began climbing out of the economic doldrums, thanks in part to increased auto production and housing starts. Long-term issues ahead for our industry included obsolete facilities, changes in mineral demands, and stronger foreign competition. Though Black Monday, October 19, 1987, marked the largest stock market plunge in the U.S. since 1929, the minerals industry, by all measures, remained strong. SME President Thomas Falke offered this view of the times and his peers in the industry. Mining people tend to be overly optimistic when times are good, and overly pessimistic when times are bad. The year of my SME presidency, 1982, was the most memorable of my career, most of which was spent in academe. About this time, the mining industry fell on hard economic times, a situation that prevailed for a number of years. The effect on manpower in the industry was devastating. Many professionals left the industry, and student enrollment was impacted severely. However, it was a peak membership year for SME, with 29,000 corporate and student members. At the conclusion of the decade, SME members voted to change the name of the organization from the Society of Mining Engineers to the Society for Mining, Metallurgy, and Exploration. This change underscored the broadened outreach of the society to include all segments of the minerals industry, search, extraction, processing, and marketing. Um, if I look back um, my involvement, 
uh, with SME over the last <coughs> decades, uh, it has helped me to grow uh, personally and also as professionally. I have found um, people in SME from my very beginning to be very caring of um, younger members, particularly when I joined as a student. And um, they were very um, uh, giving and, you know, of their time. Uh, whenever I had to um, ask for an answer or get some help or guidance, um, I always got um, more than what I expected. And that's a credit to the dedication and loyalty of SME members. The 90s. The 90s began optimistically for our industry worldwide, with higher than expected metal prices and production often at full capacity. Environmental regulations were becoming a decisive force for many in the minerals industry. An abundance of complex legislation led to a new category of professional employees within our industry, environmental scientists and engineers. Looking back on my year as president, I'm particularly proud of leading efforts to develop and implement a strategic plan for SME and to establish policies that improve the organization as a whole, as opposed to individual divisions. A strong functional executive committee was formed this year that recognized the need for a change in leadership within SME at a critical time, and the committee was willing to act accordingly. We said farewell in 1991 to Claude Crowley who'd served as executive director of SME for 22 years. Claude was really a remarkable person. Uh, he, and we were very lucky to have him as the executive director at, in that period of time. Uh, he had many achievements, but was always behind the scene. His basic philosophy was that the SME and the staff were there to promote the benefits and interests of, the, of its membership. In 1995, we unveiled SME's World Wide Web page. This became a tremendous tool in our endeavor to promote information exchange among members around the globe. In all, SME enjoyed a healthy decade, thanks to judicious cost-cutting programs, technological innovation, strong leadership, and international expansion. Looking back on my years as a member of SME, my fondest memories are the many wonderful friends I've made over the years and the wonderful staff members I've been privileged to work with. My earliest memories go back to when Ruth Orologio and Darlene Daly were intimately involved in the meetings and Claude Crowley was executive director. Claude would call me and say, Bob, this conversation never happened. However, this is what we need to do. My involvement with SME has been one of the highlights of my career. SME's back on its feet right now, and that's kind of a nice thing to see. And I'm pretty adamant that it isn't back on its feet because commodity prices are back up. It's back on its feet because of the good things that have happened. And uh, a lot of the good stuff that's happened over a period of time has been the, uh, the, the financial discipline that we've had within the society. The uh, first time in, what is it, 20-some years now, that we're going to have a growth in membership. Um, the evolution, the way we've been able to keep up with the evolution in technology, not just our technology, but all technologies. I think our web page at SME is one of the best around for a group. I mean, we have a small group of people that work on that. They do a great job, do a super job on it. New Millennium. The new millennium dawned, and happily, when we turned the computers on, <laughs> they worked. The Y2K crisis and its surrounding hysteria fizzled. As the new millennium unfurled, commodity prices were in a slump. This was a new economy, fueled by a new form of power, the Internet. Former SME President Michael Karmas summed up the minerals industry of the new millennium. The global, economic, technological, social and political change in the past two decades of the 20th century resulted in the emergence of a restructured minerals industry. The industry is now based on a new cost-cutting philosophy, modern technology, productivity gains, diversification of minerals markets, and globalization of exploration and processing. 
SME suffered a terrible blow at the start of the new millennium when in May of 2000, Executive Director Gary Howell passed away unexpectedly. Gary, much beloved and respected, had been with SME since 1994. The industry continued to look to developing nations for new sources and places to conduct business. Companies continued to merge resources to meet the challenges of these times. Both friendly and hostile takeovers dominated the headlines, as they do today. In 2004, David Kanegi left the Iron and Steel Society, a fellow AIME member society since 1974, to become the SME's new executive director. And he's at the helm as we begin our next 50 years. 2005 was also the year of the first female SME president, Barbara Phyllis. Attracting new corporate and student members from around the globe remained a priority. Former President Tom O'Neill said, there is never a shortage of problems or challenges facing the mining industry. There never has been, yet mining remains an essential business with great opportunity. This year, we're celebrating our golden anniversary with tremendous appreciation for the remarkable leadership, members and staff who've worked so very hard to build the organization. We salute the tenacious spirit of this unstoppable industry.